Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good day, my dear sisters and brothers. The Universal Church is celebrating the 26th week in ordinary time, cycle B. And we begin our celebration asking the Lord to forgive us of our sins as we say together, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most weakness, fault, Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, we manifest your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy. Bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. We make our prayer through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Numbers. Are you jealous on my account? If only the whole people of the Lord were prophets. The Lord came down in the cloud. He spoke with Moses, but took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the seventy elders. When the spirit came on them, they prophesied, but not again. Two men had stayed back in the camp. One was called Eldar and the other Bida. The spirit came down on them. Though they had not gone to the tent, their names were enrolled among the rest. These began to prophesy in the camp. The young man ran to tell this to Moses. Look, he said, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Then said Joshua, the son of Nun, who had served Moses from his youth. My Lord Moses, stop them. Moses answered him, Are you jealous on my account? If only the whole people of the Lord were prophets, and the Lord gave his spirit to them all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A response. 
The precepts of the Lord gladden the heart. The precepts of the Lord gladden the heart. The lure of the Lord is perfect, it revives the soul. The rule of the Lord is to be trusted. It gives wisdom to the simple. The precepts of the Lord gladden the heart. The fear of the Lord is holy, abiding forever. The decrees of the Lord are truth, and all of them just. The precepts of the Lord gladden the heart. So in them your servant finds instruction. Great reward is in their keeping. But who can detect all his errors? From hidden faults acquit me. The precepts of the Lord gladden the heart. From presumption restrain your servant, and let it not rule me. Then shall I be blameless, clean from grave sin. The precepts of the Lord gladden the heart. A reading from the letter of St. James. Your wealth is all rotten. An answer for the rich. Start crying. Weep for the miseries that are coming to you. Your wealth is all rotten. Your clothes are all eaten up by moths. All your gold and your silver are corroding away. And the same corrosion will be your own sentence and eat into your body. It was a burning fire that you stored up as your treasure for the last days. Laborers mowed your fields, and you cheated them. Listen to the wages that you kept back, calling out. Realize that the cries of the reapers have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. On earth, you have had a life of comfort and luxury. In the time of slaughter, you went on eating to your heart's content. It was you who condemned the innocent and killed them. They offered you no resistance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Your word is truth, O Lord. Consecrate us in the truth. Alleluia. truth, O Lord. Consecrate us in the truth. Alleluia. from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Do not stop anyone from walking a miracle in my name. John said to Jesus, Master, we saw a man who is not one of us 
casting out devils in your name. And because he was not one of us, we tried to stop him. But Jesus said, you must not stop him. No one who walks a miracle in my name is likely to speak evil of me. Anyone who is not against us is for us. If anyone gives you a cup of water to drink just because you belong to Christ, then I tell you solemnly, he will most certainly not lose his reward. But anyone who is an obstacle to bring down one of these little ones who have faith would be better thrown into the sea with a mi great millstone round his neck. And if your hand should cause you to sin, cut it off. It, it is better for you to enter into life crippled than to have two hands and go to hell into the fire that cannot be put out. And if your foot should cause you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life lame than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye should cause you to sin, tear it out. It is better for you to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell where the worm does not die, nor the fire go out. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And John, the Apostle, speaks to Jesus and said to him, We met someone who is not one of us, casting out devils and healing. And Jesus said, Well, if what he does in healing and casting out devils, he's doing God's work. And therefore, he's not against us. He is with us. That's a very interesting line. It's the very first line of the gospel. My dear sisters and brothers, because you, or we can see an element of intolerance. Intolerance in John. We do not know this man and he is performing and acting in a manner that he is not one of us. Now on, on Friday gone by, the 24th of September, um, Trinidad and Tobago celebrated uh, a national holiday celebrating Republic Day Republic Day is when we declare that the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago are in control of their own destiny. And the power is in their hands and in the hands of their elected ones. And the anthem, the national anthem reminds us that every creed and race find an equal place and may God bless our nation. We are very conscious of the fact that there's a strong level of tolerance in our society. We tolerate one another, people of different faiths, of different cultures, of different ethnicity. And that is an extraordinary blessing. Where there is unity, God is present. Where there is oneness, God is present. Where there is love, God is present. And that's what we are celebrating. There's a high level of 
tolerance coming from the Lord, simply saying that while he is not one of us, if he's doing good work, we celebrate that good work. St. James, in his reading, made reference to the fact that while there is intolerance and anger, you have disharmony and all kinds of foul deeds. And then in the Gospel, we hear of the Lord saying that if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. And your foot and your eye. But we have to recognize that Jesus is not talking about the physical cutting off. He's talking about something that's very, very deep that only when we use our imagination and we say, what is the Lord saying to us? Because remember, there's a very interesting example given to us by Holy Mother the Church. It goes back to the second century with the early fathers of the church. We had um, Oregon of um, Alexandria, um, a fluent in theology, prolific writer, talking about the, the, the theology. Now, the theology was developing in those days. A man who was very holy, a man who wanted to get very close to God. And he believed that in getting closer to God and to become more pure, he castrated himself, believing that it would bring him closer to God. There is a purpose in that story, my dear sisters and brothers. So just to finish off that particular story, so when the early fathers of the church had, had passed away in the third uh, century, and then when the Roman Empire became Christian, and the whole concept of uh, showing reverence and respect for the early fathers of the church, Oregon was not canonized because he mutilated himself. Cutting off your foot physically, that's mutilation. Cutting off your hand is mutilation. Tearing your eye out, or that of other people, is mutilation. And that's not what this gospel is all about. It's about what causes us to sin. Anger. Cut it off. If you don't cut anger off, you are creating hell. If you're intolerant, you're creating hell. If you're hurt and you don't deal with your hurt, you're creating hell. And that's mentioned in the gospel. What causes you to sin will throw you into hell. But it's hell today we're living in. Now, nowadays, the more people who you meet who have abandoned the faith, I don't believe in God, and I certainly don't believe in hell. Many people are experiencing hell on earth. And that's a challenge to each and every one of us. We know all the negatives, and that's what the gospel is saying. Cut off the negatives, the intolerance, the anger, the resentment, the hurt. Deal with the hurt. And the litany continues. That's what the Lord is saying to each and every one of us. It's not about mutilation. It's about letting go of all the negatives that's creating a hell. Just heard a, a story, and you, know, you don't know who I'm talking about, about um, a married woman with a young family. She discovered that the husband was in a relationship. And she challenged him. And he admitted to it. Which seems to be whatever, honorable or, or whatever. But then she went for a test and discovered that she has a, a sexually transmitted uh, disease. Now there is hell. 
for the family and for the young family. So it's very, very tangible, my dear sisters and brothers. Now we go back to the early church. And we're all, the early church was striving for holiness and perfection. And then when it came to the colonial countries and the conquistadores, and the church traveled with them. And whatever country they came to, particularly referring to the New World, ordinary people, the indigenous people, were slaughtered because they're different. They look different. They acted different. They worship in a different way. The level of intolerance, my dear sisters and brothers, and people were mutilated. And all the Lord is simply saying, let them be, be tolerant. If there's something to offer, recognize their goodness. But no, when it comes to invading another person's country, you come in with the heavy hand and the brutality. Okay, we say that's all history. But if we reflect on the 21st century, there's still that element, that element of political, the political invasion of people's lives and not allowing people to express their goodness and their love and their oneness and their tolerance. Life hasn't changed. And in fact, it's going from bad to worse. No, we are sophisticated, 21st century. And yet, there's an element there whereby we won't allow the other to grow. We won't allow the other to express themselves. That's all Jesus said. Leave him alone. Let him express himself. Was it Chesterton that once said, Christianity has not failed. Christianity has not been tried. And throughout the centuries, we read and we know what the teachings of Jesus Christ is all about. And yet we live a different lifestyle. So when it's about cutting what off is the badness, is the negativity, is the intolerance, is the anger, is the selfishness, it's the pride. That's what the Lord is talking about. And in our own different ways, we do create hell. If not for ourselves, we certainly create hell for other people. And that's what the gospel is all about. The gospel is simply saying, let it be, leave him be, leave her allowed to express herself. She's a right to express herself. Mahatma Gandhi said, while speaking to a Christian uh, minister, he said, your role as a Christian minister is to make Hindus better Hindus, because Hinduism is searching for the truth. And whoever finds the truth, finds God. Leave him alone in his culture and in his language and in his expression of who he is. Jesus never imposed on any one of us. No, will he impose on any one of us? This is it. I am the Lord your God. Thou shalt not have false gods before me. Now, if you want to worship a golden calf, if you want to bacchanal or whatever, Jesus, God, will not come down on us, but we are creating hell for ourselves and for our family. To me, my dear sisters and brothers, that's what sacred scripture is saying. And remember, on Friday, we celebrated Republic Day, where every creed and race finds an equal place. And may God bless our nation. 
Yes, there's a certain level of tolerance in our nation. Now, at another level, there's a certain level of intolerance. If you're driving on the highway, you certainly meet a lot of intolerance. And it's amazing how many people get furious and angry behind the wheel. That's something we need to be very careful and re recognize that we are being tested every moment of every day. It's simply a question of having, uh, allowing people to write to express themselves. There's so many examples of so many countries downtrodden by invading countries and denied of their rights, their spiritual rights, their human rights, their dignity for occupation. But there lies another story. Remember, John was chastising this man. There's someone who's not one of us, casting out devils and healing. And because he's not one of us, we try to stop him. And Jesus says, no. If he's doing good, expressing his goodness in his own way, if he's casting out devils, that's a blessing. If he's healing, that is a blessing. Leave him be. Amen. 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 In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, Consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day. In accordance with his scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now, my dear sisters and brothers, we offer of our petitions, whatever they may be. Almighty God, fill Pope Francis as a Bishop Jason Gordon and the clergy with your grace that through the word and the sacraments, they may bring hope and comfort to your flock. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Merciful God, we pray for the church that at the appropriate time, we may return to our parishes to give glory to your name with zeal and thanksgiving in our hearts. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Blessed Saviour, breathe a fresh breath of your Holy Spirit upon our nation and especially our leaders 
that they may develop policies that will ensure that all our citizens will have access to food and shelter and live in safety and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Dear Jesus, just as the Holy Family had to seek refuge in Egypt, grant that we may open our hearts and hands to the needs of the refugees and migrants in our midst as they seek a better life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. O God, enkindle in the hearts of young men and women the spark of a vocation to help with the work in your vineyard. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Also in our celebration, we join our prayer of thanks with the prayers of those who are celebrating their birthdays and giving praise and thanks to God for life, for those celebrating wedding anniversaries, and also those who are simply giving praise and thanks to God for blessings and favours received. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear us. Lord, we pray for particular intentions that have been placed upon the altar. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear us. We pray for healing for those who have asked for healing, that the Lord will raise his healing hand over them. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear us. Lord, gracious hear us. We pray for the faith for the parted, that the Lord in his goodness will receive them into his heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear us. Lord, gracious hear us. Of intentions we have ourselves, we place them here on the sacrificial table and we offer them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God Pray now, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. 
always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for when your children were scattered afar by sin, to the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that the people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit might, to the praise of your manifold wisdom, be manifest as your church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Holy, You're indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the Jew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord. And profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Jason, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our sisters and our brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you 
through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. On the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and glory and yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you shall enter under my roof. For only say the word, and my soul shall be.
we are one body, grafted into Christ through baptism, configured into him through the grace that we have received when we became children of God. For he that is not against us is on our part. For whosoever shall give you a cup of water to drink in my name, because ye belong to Christ, verily I say unto you, he shall not lose his reward. And whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, it is better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and he were cast into the sea. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worm dieth not, and the fire... Does Jesus mean this literally? We can be certain that this language, which is shocking, is not a literal command, but is rather a symbolic statement, commanding us to avoid sin with great zeal and to avoid all that leads us to sin. The eye can be understood as a window to our soul where our thoughts and desires reside. The hand can be seen as a symbol of our actions. Thus, we must eliminate every thought, affection, desire, and action that leads us to sin. The true key to understanding this passage is to allow ourselves to be affected by the powerful language that Jesus uses. He does not hesitate to speak in a shocking way so as to reveal to us the calling we have to confront with much zeal that which leads to sin in our lives. Pluck it out. Cut it off, he says. In other words, eliminate your sin and all that leads you to sin in a definitive way. The eye and the hand are not sinful in and of themselves. Rather, in this symbolic language, they are spoken of those things that lead to sin. Therefore, if certain thoughts or certain actions lead you to sin, these are the areas to target and eliminate. Regarding our thoughts, sometimes we can allow ourselves to dwell excessively upon this or that. As a result, these thoughts can lead us to sin. The key is to pluck out that initial thought that produces the bad fruit. Regarding our actions, we can at times put ourselves in situations that tempt us and lead us to sin. These occasions of sin must be cut off from our lives. Reflect today upon this very direct and powerful language of our Lord. Let the forcefulness of his words be an impetus for change and avoidance of all sin. Let us pray. Lord, I am sorry for my sin and I ask for your mercy and forgiveness. Please help me to avoid all that leads me to sin and to surrender all my thoughts and actions to you every day. Jesus, I trust in you.
Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death. We make our prayer to Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. In the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And you spend a pleasant day. Amen.